Uh, welcome back uh, to the Art of Dialogue. Uh, we have a very special guest once again. Uh, the last time you were on, it was fantastic. The people loved you. Um, once again, you can introduce yourself for the people who don't know, but for the people who do, um, I'm sure that they are happy that you're back on the Art of Dialogue. I'm Will Garland, father of Tupac Shakur. I right. mean, you did some interviews in the past and you approached me again. I'm glad it was you because I like the way you do things. Okay. Thank you. Um, let, let's get right into it. Um, with the recent arrest of Keefe D, how do you feel about that in relation to the murder of your son, Tupac Shakur? That's a tough one, but it's very clear. He's just a tool. He's always been a tool. And it's just time that they used him for what they wanted to use him. Because if you couldn't see if it was the government, Justice Department, the LAPD, the Las Vegas Police Department, and several other entities. Anytime, you know, a black man gets strong that has the potential to lead other black people, he's not going to survive. You know that they name a street after you. They give you a star on the street, but you're gone and you're desire to do what you wanted to do is gone with it. Absolutely. Tupac was a leader and he was going to put away all that silly stuff, all that East Coast, West Coast shit. And he was going to get back to the basic of educating people, not just black people, all people mm -hmm. about the contradictions in society. And so, like I said, when, when, in, in the situation involving keeping D, um, his arrest, why do you think that they uh, decided to do it now? One, let's be very honest. He's not a very intelligent individual. Okay. When you go on air and say you participated in a high-scale assassination, eventually it's going to come back on you. Yeah. I was surprised he went that far, that long, without them arresting him. He was involved in them. He was in the car. Mm -hmm. That's aiding and abetting in a murder. But uh, he was doing his part with the rest of the people who were talking about the land or Anderson. He was fulfilling that, that glitch. He was adding to their truth, which we all know wasn't true. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we know a lot of other things, particularly death row. But anyway. Right. Um, the fact that Keefe D wasn't the shooter, does it mean any more or any less? Or are you happy that somebody is actually being charged who admittingly was involved with the murder of your son, too? No, Shakur. I think it does absolutely nothing. I'm just as empty by the loss of my son as the rest of the world is. Everybody can see through this thin veil of deceit. It was ridiculous. They didn't believe him when he was on YouTube and that every week talking that stupid stuff. I mean, he's just not an intelligent individual. Mm -hmm. And the people they use to fabricate their story, their belief, are not usually intelligent. And he's, I don't feel bad that, uh, in fact, uh, he got arrested, but I don't think it's closure. I think it's still open to debate. But I don't think we'll ever find out who really did the, suit, the shooting. But we know it wasn't the one individual. And I don't think he might have been involved in the key for D, but he was a pawn. He was being used, basically, maybe by the government, maybe by death row. Mm -hmm. But death row and the government is one and the same at this particular time. Okay. Not for nothing. Yeah. And so the fact that he wasn't the shooter and he was arrested, um, you you feel good, bad, and different? Well, I would No. I have no feelings about it whatsoever. Because it's not true, if okay. you know what I'm saying. Okay. It's not it's not the truth. It's just another on being moved in the game of chess to just move the pieces around to create that gray area, to create that continual story that we don't know who did it. It could be anybody. Okay. And that's what they want. And even if we found that if a man came up out of the woodwork tomorrow and said he did it, who would believe him in light of what's been happening lately with this? Based on the, based on the conspiracies and yeah, every stories, and right. all of the misinformation I mean, right. and things it's like been that. It's ridiculous. Okay. They just keep throwing mud on the walls and something sticks. Right. That's what they do. That's what the government does. They grade. They just keep 
never black and white. We just keep throwing shit up there and make it gray. Right. And you got people talking. You got some people talking. He's in Mexico. Some people talking. He's in Cuba drinking pina coladas. I mean, come on. Who stays away for 27 years from fame and glory? Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. So It's, it's kind of like Tupac said in his, his lyrics. Uh, they like uh, Judas was the Jesus. They came to create confusion. That's all. Basically, I feel. Yeah. Okay. Keefe D at one point was a baller. He was getting money, drug kingpin or whatever. Uh, the fact that he couldn't afford a lawyer at the time he was arrested and had to settle for a public defender says what to you about it they didn't they didn't pay him very much the death row they didn't pay him enough obviously mm -hmm. not for nothing right. that's ridiculous but he had to uh, he had to foresee that he was gonna have some conflict down the road he's getting on tv every week every week i've seen a video of him saying i did this i was in the car i did this you can't do that. You can't thumb your nose consistently at justice. You can get away with it once in a while, but when you do it consistently, someone has to answer for it. And I guess he's got to answer. Do you think I think he was involved? Yes, I do, one way or the other. Do I think he was in charge? Do I think that he came up with this idea on his own? I disagree with that. I think he was a tool. I think he was a pawn being used. And they used him well. Look how long it took him for the rest. 27 years. Mm -hmm. you, his story is written in stone now. His story is written in granite. Orlando Anderson. If you ask the average individual in the world who killed Tupac, they would say Orlando Anderson. Same thing with the kidnapping. The same thing. Lee Harvey Oswald. They would all say that because they don't know any better. Mm. And humans tend to go with their first inclination, the first bit of information that they get that satisfies their curiosity. And they accept it. And that was the easy one to exist, especially since it lasted 27 years that Orlando Anderson was the shooter. The man who said he did not see Anderson shoot Tupac was his boy, and he was killed months later. You're talking and, about Yaku Pidak? Yeah. Right. The only viable witness. Why would you kill him? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very important. I find it, um, I found it, you know, kind of ironic myself that, you know, at the end of the day, uh, he wasn't able to afford a lawyer. Makes no sense. Yeah. That makes no sense. Right. But who's going to pay for it? The government's not. Death Rhodes. Whoever comes up and steps up to aid him in his defense mm -hmm. looks like co conspirators. Right. So he'll never get anybody with some money to do that. Right. He can start a GoFundMe if he wants to. <laughs> I'm just joking because he's always talking how tough and shit he is on YouTube, bragging and downing on my son. You know, he said some shit that was just disparaging. He should have known he shouldn't get away with doing what he did. Yeah. Talk down about it. The world loves Tupac. How dare you? And then you might be the possible shooter, and his death kind of makes everybody believe you did do it. Right. So, so, so are you referring to when he told, uh, when he said that uh, Tupac was breakdancing in the front seat of the car trying to get away from the bullets? A lot of little stuff he said. Yeah. yeah. A lot of little stuff he said. A lot of little stuff, but that wasn't a hard hit. And you, all you do is pull up just far too far from the other car. And people think that, well, sure, night they didn't get killed. You're not fine directly. This is Cadillac pulling up. You pull up real close. We're talking about six inches away. But you pull up on an angle. You have to understand it's a slight angle, and you're shooting back. Sugar Knight got hit with a piece of glass. He was not entertaining to talk. How you going to miss a 350 fat fuck like him? Excuse me for cursing. If you were shooting into a car. So it was an, it's a, a sign hit and a sign assassination. Mm -hmm. We knew who the target was. Mm -hmm. We knew how it went down. Same way with B. They both were the same way. And the same people probably were involved. But I have no uh, getting back to him. I just, he's just a tool. His name doesn't even need to be mentioned anymore. It was just a tool. He was used. Keefe D. He had his 15 minutes of fame. With his, you know, promotion, his book, whatever he did, he got a few dollars out of it, but he pushed it. If you're a criminal, you're out of sight, out of mind. You don't get in front of lights and say, I did this, or it's with the person who did this. You just don't do that. That was one of the things that I also recognized involving that, that he had put out a book. And 
I, I don't think many people really purchased the book from that perspective. And then here comes, that's the reason why I gave you the question involving the lawyer. Then comes, oh, the fact right, that, right. then comes the fact that, well, you know, you put out a book, but when it came time to face the consequences of the charges, you, you, you couldn't afford right, a lawyer. Exactly. So, I know. Yeah, that was the reason why I kind of went. I didn't even know he had a book until he mentioned it on YouTube when you think about it. Who, but what could he possibly say that would be interesting? One, I gave my nephew the gun, or two, I was involved in shooting it. So, your life is it's not, you're a gangbanger. We know of all, that's all we see on TV t today. Any move of a black person is about a drug dealer, gangbanger. It's unfortunate, you know, or a clown or some other silly shit. They don't portray us the way we really are. So, but who wants to read a book about him? You know, you know what else? That, that spawned another question. In his book, in Keefe D's book, he actually tried to come up with a plausible defense. Really? In regards to saying that when they pulled up on the car, Tupac allegedly tried to reach. I heard that book. Four guns. You're right. Tupac wasn't even armed that night. They didn't bring no pieces. And they told all the bodyguards to leave their pieces home, which they never did before. Reggie White did that, who really technically wasn't involved in security for Tupac. Tupac had fired him prior. We got proof for that. We got papers and uh, a documented uh, information that he was fired right away security from Tupac's detail. So why was he involved in Tupac's security at night? And they tell me that this boy Reggie is never away from Suge Knight. That when you saw Suge Knight, you saw Reggie. So why wasn't Reggie with Suge Knight? A lot of little contradictory stuff, but you never get to the bottom of this, especially when you got the LAPD PD involved, you got the Justice Department involved. You never get the truth. You just, you go, it's a merry-go-round of uh, possibilities. That's all it is. You just, what's all the possibilities? All you know is that he's dead, and it wasn't just one individual. That I can state emphatically. Sean Puffy Combs recently settled a lawsuit with his former girlfriend, Cassie. In that lawsuit, uh, she said that one night she watched Sean Puffy Combs retrieve guns from a safe in his house because he had heard that Suge Knight was at Mel's Diner in Hollywood. Cassie said that uh, Sean Puffy Combs wanted to go get at Suge. Does that change your perception about Sean Puffy Combs and his propensity for violence in relation to the Tupac situation? Regarding Keefe D saying that yeah, Puffy gave him, the, him the money, um, I don't, promised him the million dollars. I don't know dollars. why I don't believe that. That's just something that I just don't believe that Puffy had to. He might have wanted to, but I don't think he had the balls, to be honest with you. Now, I know he's done some low shit, and he's been in the news lately. So anything else uh, culturally and socially wouldn't surprise me about this guy. He's always had an issue, and I've never really, really was fond of him. Beyond, beyond his issues with Tupac, the East Coast, West Coast, I really never bought into that. It was man-made, industry-produced to sell records, East Coast, West Coast. You might have had a few beefs. You can have a few beefs with somebody in your neighborhood. You can have a few beefs with somebody on your team. You're going to have a few beefs with somebody in your house, a relative. You can have a beef, but that don't mean you, your side hates the other side of the family, or this side hates the other side of the community, or this side hates the other side of the team. So why does it have to happen in rappers from one coast to the other, and then both coasts hate each other? It makes no sense. You ask the average rapper from the East Coast, they ain't no beef with the West Coast. Average rapper from the West Coast, they just follow the lead. Records were selling them. Records were selling, but the only one doing the talking you didn't hear Snoop and them talking about the East Coast. You didn't hear none of them other people talking about the East Coast. All you heard was Death Row and Pa. Right. And Puffy and that. And them other people didn't do no talking against the Pa. All you heard was about Puffy and that. I don't know. Maybe they both was government. As, as you, you, you actually spawned another question with that. It's a fact that on the night that Biggie was killed, Keefe D had met with Sean Puffy Combs twice that day I heard. it was once at a uh celebrity basketball game and later on that night at the peterson automotive museum you know before biggie was killed and so with that 
why do you think that Keefe D never asked Puffy for the million dollars that he had said that Puffy allegedly promised him from that perspective? I, I, I couldn't answer that. I'm just sorry I couldn't. But you're getting into the mindset of some people who were not very stable. Let's be honest. Keefe D's not very stable. You've seen him on YouTube a million times. Does he sound like someone you would have watch your grandchild while you went to the movies? Come on, let's be honest. And Puffy, some of the shit I've been hearing him doing, you know, you got something good for who you are and what you're about and just accept it and stop playing all this cat and mouse. And he ain't going to come out the closet. You ain't, but whatever the case might be. He's in the news for all the wrong things. And this is fact on top of how he disrespected and basically cheated a lot of his former employees out of their money. Allah should not. But the Jews did it. The Italians did it prior before they got there. All record dealers did it. They hold royalties back. They just cheat performers out of their money. They just always done. But it's just been more evidence since it happened to my son. And it's happened to all these people from uh, uh, Puffy's organization. You know, it's been more, you, you say one, you say, okay, he, he might have made a mistake clear. But when you have five, six, seven, eight, nine, the majority of your company say the same thing. Come on, man. He would give, like I said before, he would give Tupac a car. Tupac, he got a new fucking Benz or a new Jag. Driving around his mind. When he died, he found out it belonged to Death Row. It was a lease. He had no idea. Instead of him giving him his royalties, he would give him jewelry, cars, in houses, little places to stay. And Pac don't think it was his. But smoking that chronic and girls throwing panties at you and you living the life of a king, sometimes you don't pay attention to the more technical, serious things about your life. It makes you wonder who was around to help you do that. And not for nothing. What were the outlaws there for? You got four month leaders, four, five on two. Come on. Somebody got pulled the boy aside and say, hey, now, for nothing, you had your mother, who you supposed to be so close there. She was involved with legal stuff prior. She defended herself for Panther 21. Why you didn't seek guidance from her about some of the financial situations? I mean, we know why now, because she really, unfortunately, had burned some bridges with him. I won't even get into that right now. Right. But. No, the reason why I asked about the, the, the situation in the million dollars was because in uh, the interviews that Keith D had did, on various platforms, if you will. I know. I he know. mentioned, he kept mentioning Never this been. money, this money. But on that 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 specific night, um, when he did the interview, Guess, yeah, I know. He never said anything about asking Puffy for the million dollars. I so can't, I can't speak to that. Right. Yeah, you know, that's a hard one. You, I just can't. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like it might not be true. Who knows? You got to think about that. But I have very little respect for either one of them. So. Mm -hmm. After the Las Vegas incident at the MGM Grand, Suge Knight went to jail for just a little kick for violation of probation. Do you think if Tupac had lived, uh, would they have violated him and revoked his appeal bond and sent him back to prison? That was fate. He didn't mind him, but he beat a lot of charges. The feds liked him. He was involved. Remember, the feds were supposed to be watching him now for... Years and years on years. Supposed to have somebody on the cover inside. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Feds had never charged him with a crime to this day. Makes you wonder, but that's neither here nor there. So, I don't know. That's a, that's, I can't, I can't call. That's a tough call. That's a tough call. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough call. Yeah. yeah. Keefe D confessed to his involvement in the murder of your son, Tupac Shakur, recently. Suge Knight has spoken out and was asked, would he testify if he was called? And he said no. I know. And he also said, free Keefe D. I know. What are your feelings behind that? I did that. Maybe Keefe D worked for you. Maybe that's my feeling about that. But he also said the same thing about Tupac. If you could identify the person who shot Tupac. He, I think he almost said, I saw him or something to that nature. And he said, flat, no. Come on. Either you're going to do something to that individual or you're going to identify him. One, one, one way or the other, you know. So you think that it's just the uh, code of the streets or? You, just, you, I think it was just bullshit, bro. 
after the Las Vegas incident at the MGM Grand, Suge Knight had went to jail for just a little kick on Orlando Anderson for violation of probation. Do you think if Tupac would have survived uh, that they would have violated him and sent him back to prison for that incident? I don't think so. I, I don't know. They might agree, but I don't said all the things. I'm sorry, guys. I got to repeat myself again about the feds and death row. I get a little confused, to be honest with you. Can you slice all that together a little bit? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I find myself trying to remember now what I said? Right, uh, right. No, it doesn't matter because uh, you're gonna they'll, they'll, together, use the, yeah, no. they'll use the best, the best, the but best. But to be honest with you, actually, no. I think uh, they might have, because of all the other violations he had, they might have. Because you got to one kick. Could have possibly ended this gentleman's life. Not for nothing. How many times you see the mob thing with that last kick? It wasn't just an innocent little kick, not between you and I. The man weighed 300 pounds, and you're coming down on with your foot with a series of five other little things here, which was a setup as far as I'm concerned. We all know that was. That boy had nothing to do with it. And he's dead now because of a lie. Yeah. That's what's so tragic about all this. People are actually dead. Oh, bullshit. When you say he's dead now for a lie, who do you mean? Everybody said that he did that. Everybody said that. Greg K, Katie, Reggie, everybody. Vlad, Vlad. It, it became an ongoing final answer to who killed Tupac, Orlando Anderson. Orlando Anderson. Even okay. Afini said it. I was shocked when I saw that. You don't know that. You should know, but not unless you ain't go, never mind. I don't want to get into that. Cahoots with death row. But you know, damn well it wasn't Orlando Anderson. We knew that from the first time, from that first night, we knew it was. Fake, you know how crowded Vegas is after a Mike Tyson fight? Do you know how many cars are out there going? It's like a parade. People hanging out the window. It's like Mardi Gras. And you're going to tell me a big white Cadillac is able to pull up on the side of another car, fire a gun, shoot somebody, and then drive off and disappear into the night. With his cops on every corner directing traffic. Bro, let's be honest. It's all a facade. So you think it's all a facade? Yeah. Until they got what they want, they got the man dead. That's all. That's the main goal. Mission accomplished. Someone said on the radio, we got him. That part. You know. <laughs> talking about. That part, right? Yeah. Um, so on September 29th, 2023, you hear the news that Keefe D has been arrested and charged in the connection with the murder of your son, Tupac Shakur. What goes through your mind? From, for a slight second, you think progress, and then you realize it's just part of the game. It actually has nothing to do with anything. Because he's sitting there, people still think it was going in the hands. They, they, just, they can't put shit together. You know, people just sometimes don't think. They, they take the easiest path. And that's usually the first one that's offered to them. Whatever it is, you know, we're walking down the street now. We're going to continue walking with this lie. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have mattered, you know, who knows. So, so when you say that when, when Keefe D gets arrested, you don't think that he spoke outside of what they had offered, the deal that they had offered, the proffer agreement that they had offered him. Do you think by him doing the various other interviews that he somehow was violating the proffer agreement and speaking That's out? Could possibly well be. I think they thought he was going too far. Uh, who knows? Uh, he wasn't a very intelligent man. And sometimes greed, people offer you money to come on the show. It's hard to turn down that money. Give you a book deal, it's hard to turn down that money. Yeah, he's a hustler. So maybe he thought it'd be best in his best interest to continue to do that. I think they used him as long as they needed to use him. 27 years, that's a totally different generation. Let's pump these mountains with some new information, some new lies. Right. Let's muddy these waters a little bit, gray up the situation, have them talking some more. So Lando and then went to Keefe D. Okay, what's next? Then what's next? I don't know if we ever see that first one. We gave the order. On July 17th, 2023, you sitting at home, and you hear Las Vegas police have raided the house of Keefe D based on the investigation involving the murder of your son, Tupac Shakur. 
where were you when you heard the information? If I you were I, at home. I think I was home. He was home. I was a, a tad surprised. You know, when somebody double teams your boy, and they were boys, the government and him, DPD, who worked for the industry on it, the proper agreement, you signed the paper. You in business with the government who's now trying to crucify you. What type of arrangement is that? How did you get to that? Where's the truth in that? If there is any. I think he used them, and now they're using him. So so basically, you're thinking that the government is using uh, Keefe D. No doubt. To, already, to close the case. Exactly. They already used them with this continuous thing about Orlando Anderson. He did his job. He fulfilled his goal. That's what we needed you out there for. That's why we gave you the proper. You asked me that in the first interview. I said he had some issues. And you got issues, you go into jail. Nobody wants to go to them hell holes. So they offer you a lifeline, sign this. Most people will sign that. They just will. So do you think he was coerced into signing the agreement in regard? It's, do you think they fed him information and he agreed with the information? He had to. There's okay. no doubt. Unless he was there and did it. Either way, he's guilty. He's the type of dude who would tell the slave master where the slaves was hiding. He's just that type of dude. He has no principle. Come on, man. He's a gangbanger. And no, no offense to the gangbangers, they caught up in some shit. But listen to him talk and how he justified all his actions for the last 27 years. I look at him with disdain, whether he shot my son or not. He's just not a good individual. He's just not a good human being. Now, if you shot my son, you're an animal. Fuck you. Hope you die. But that's just what I, that's just me. <laughs> That's just me. I don't think many people knew this, but Keefe D's birthday is two days before Tupac's birthday. Forget about all the gangster posturing. This is just the human element that I'm going to deal with when I ask you this question. With all the constant reminders of Tupac in the media and the news and all of the, you know, things that we are constantly reminded of his greatness and everything that Tupac's accomplished. Do you think that guilt played a part in Keefe D doing as many interviews that he did and confessing as much as he did because it mm -hmm. could clear his conscience for him being involved or being in the car doing your son's murder? Involved is the right word, but I, don't, I can't get into the conscience of a man I cannot understand. So I could never be in his life or his lifestyle. So you ask me a question that I really can't answer, you know. And I didn't know that he was born two days before my son. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, his birthday is on June 14th. Ain't that something? And that's the reason why I asked that question, because when you think about a person's birthday, and then when you come on Tupac's birthday, it's widely recognized across America. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, broadcasting right. the news, whether it's, you know, video channel, Everywhere, on yeah. the internet, and so on and so forth. That's the reason why. Just the conscience of a man as a human being, not Keefe D in particular, and I want you to delve into his consciousness, mm -hmm. but as a consciousness of a man, um, do you think that the proximity of the birthdays? No, I understand the question. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine him ever thinking that he would be at any level with Tupac Shakur. What recognition he can get that would be anything similar to what Tupac got. Right. Tupac's known throughout the world. His spirit, they didn't kill him. His spirit, it magnified. It's just that what he could have did in the human form if he was still around. The people he could have united. He had the money. He wasn't Malcolm, even though he believed in what the thing Malcolm was saying. Malcolm didn't have no money. H-Rat didn't have no money. Black Panther Party didn't have no money. And they doubled it. If he was allowed to continue, he would have had the money, the backing, and the notoriety to change a lot of things in this country. And they could never allow that. They never do. They never do. Mm. And he couldn't stop. And I guess neither they, they could neither, because they killed him. Anyway, here we are. Still talking about it, 27 years later. And I think that's the gift. I think that's what's special. 
And you walk down the street, you see his reflection on someone's t shirt. Or you pull up on the red light and you hear his music playing. It's a, it's a bittersweet gift. It's bitter that he's gone and you're reminded once again you have a dead son. But the joy is that he's being shared by the world this late date by this many generations. You know, the kids like Tupac. Some of them dress like Tupac on Halloween. I saw a couple of costumes, it made me laugh. So it's, it's, it's where we are. You know, we, 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 had, we had a point where I just hope people talk about his spirit, what he was truly about, and not the gangbang stuff, the East Coast, West Coast, not the murder so much, not death row, the spitting, the hollering, attempted groping, what he went to jail for. I wish he talked about his spirit what he believed in, how he wanted to help people, particularly his own people. But nobody addresses that. Our dear mama didn't address that. All eyes on me didn't address that. None of the documentaries I see address that. None of the people I see on YouTube every day is a new person who had maybe took a piss with Tupac in the tower. I took a piss with him one day in the restaurant. So I can I get on YouTube and, and, and talk about my experience with Tupac, people who had a party people who were in the waiting room of the hospital that particular day when he got shot. Always, I, 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 yeah, and it makes me laugh. Because I was there and I didn't even see you. But that's neither here nor there. It's just everybody wants a piece of him. And I should be honored and grateful that they love him that much around the world. But it's, it's, it's funny sometimes. I just watch these videos. I said, well, I just watched something for 40 minutes. You didn't give me no insight, nothing about the man. All you did was tell me about how you interacted with him. Nobody really gives a fuck. <laughs> Excuse me for cursing. I'm sorry, guys. But your relationship to him, anyway. Next thank, question. Thank you. I, I get. I, if I talk too much, guys, forgive me. No, we we, we I, love the I, conversation. That's that's what we're here for. So don't don't never feel. I go off. Express yourself. How you express yourself before, no more, no less. Well, you're talking about 27 years of tears. Yeah. 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 Shield Knight just spoke out recently on his own podcast through Breakbeat Media that unbeknownst to him at the time that his security had asked Frank Alexander to lie and say that Orlando Anderson tried to snatch Tupac's chain at the MGM. And that was the situation that actually started the fight. According to Shield Knight and Frank Alexander, why do you think Shield Knight's security would unilaterally decide to ask Frank Alexander to lie and say that Orlando tried to snatch Tupac's chain before the fight even started. Right. I think to get this story straight, that's what I heard from some people that this has been years that they had a meeting and they pretty much had this story. They, all of that, all of the security guards. So whatever you believe or thought you saw or didn't see, this is what you will say to the press. And you will say nothing else. And you know what will make you do that? Fear. Fear. Uh, you just saw a motherfucker get shot up. So what would make you think, I ain't shooting your ass up? And they plus, the third thing is they pay me. So do I take the chance of, of speaking up with the truth, which some people do, irregardless of the consequence, or do I go with the lies and say, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I didn't speak, you know, the, the, the three monkeys. First, he did come out and talk about it, Frank Anderson. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yeah. He did. Then he died. And the big boy, too, what's his name? The other security who was talking about, they told us to leave our guns home. We never were told. That was, that's Frank. That was Frank. No, the tall guy who was the fireman. Was you mean Michael Moore? Ma Michael Moore. Okay. How did he die? Do you have any idea? Um, from what I understand, it was a... Um, a complication uh, with uh, opioids. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a complication. He had, had some injuries and things like that. And, oh, okay. Yeah, from what I understand. I Don't don't quote me on yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's curious. Yeah, yeah. So you think, so So basically, you know, with, with, with the, the head of security asking Frank Alexander to say that Orlando Anderson initiated the contact and tried to snatch Tupac's chain with the big medallion. No, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part. Right. I just heard the other part. The other part. Yeah. No, this is what Suge Knight has said recently. Hey, but why would we believe Suge Knight? 
Okay. He's a fat, lying piece of excrement. Let's, let's be honest. The trouble and misery he's caused to this planet, mm -hmm. if it was documented, would make you look like the Antichrist. He's, right. he's terrible. The people he shot just to, man, I, mean, I, I, he's, I don't know why they would believe him. Man, how did he get an iPod? How did he, how did he get production from prison? From a, how does that work? And just over the phone. Oh, I seen those. Over yeah, I seen them. over the phone. Yeah, and he said some of the most outrageous, ridiculous right. things I've ever seen. And but now, to 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 like I said, because I always like to 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 look at the facts from that perspective. Where Shug got that from was from Frank Alexander. Frank yeah. Alexander did a did a uh, the grand jury testimony. Okay, and said basically that he was told to say. That Orlando tried to snatch Tupac's chain to cover them doing what they did to him. See, yeah, yeah. For, before yeah. The, the, that, that was the thing that initially started exactly. The fight, right? Yeah. Well, who you think told him to do that? Between you and I. Well, Frank Alexander said the security did. Yeah, but who who told security? I don't know. I know I don't either. You know, but uh, hey, you could put one and one, the two. You could put them together. Only takes one to to, to start the story. And if it's repeated, it's a fact to that side of the, that, to that particular side, okay. it becomes fact, even though it's a lie, it's fact. They will repeat it as fact. Right. So you think Frank Alexander was coerced into, I, out, of, out of fear. You, exactly. Out of fear. Like he, I met him, nice guy. I met Kevin Mack. I didn't know he was an FBI agent at the time. Not Kevin Mack, uh, uh, David. No, um, no, what's his name? Kevin Mackey. Kevin Hackey. Hackey. Yeah. yeah. Kevin Hackey. He was there that day. He, where, where did you meet Kevin Hackey? We were together that night before Tupac died. Oh, in Las Vegas? Yeah. Oh. He was telling me a lot of stuff. Can you speak on that? Nah. Okay. Nah. I might get sued. I might get shot. I'm 74. I wouldn't care. I ain't got too much long on this fucking planet. And then cut them way, so I'm going to say what I got to say, you know, and then it'll just be what it's going to be. But I ain't saying nothing nobody already don't know, right? Let's be honest. Everything I'm saying. That part, right, that I don't think people know. I don't think people knew that you and Kevin Hackey had met or you had talked to him from that perspective. That's the reason why I asked that. Yeah, we shared a room at the Caesar. Y'all shared a room at Caesar's Palace? We were just trying to hide. He had two guns. I asked him to give me one. He didn't give it to me. <laughs> he had two guns. He felt nervous because they, when he came to town, he had said that the vibe here wasn't good. He was part of Pac security at all. Now he's being treated as someone who's not part of that. See what I'm saying? It was a whole lot of things he was expressing to me. He was just telling me. This is all new to me. You know, my son laid up in the hospital dying. I don't know about the inner workings of death row and what the fuck y'all doing. I ain't got no idea what y'all talking about. But he, he, he's what he said. And uh, that's all. Mm. Then I found out he's FBI agent. Right? So when did you find that out? How soon did you find that out? Uh, much down, down the road. Much down the road? Yeah, down the road a little bit. Okay. That wasn't common. They obviously wasn't common death row. They had him up there for how long? But you tell me, you had somebody up there for that long and they didn't see no dirt, they didn't see no crime. Why was there a bus if he's working for the feds? Why there wasn't no consequences of this investigation? And now he's been treated as the outcast. He's got to worry about it. He's, he started some stuff. He started saying some stuff that were puzzling, you know, that contradicted their story. But you notice he's calmed down. Because they killed a couple of people. That's what they did. They was desperate. A pretty big assassination, bro. In our last interview, you said that Tupac was being surveilled by the government, not only at Quad Studios, but in Las Vegas the night of his assassination. Do you think your comments put pressure on the Las Vegas PD to arrest Key PD? It's a good question, because that did happen. Then I, I know... Several other people who might have thought this came out and said the same thing. Mm -hmm. And now it seems to be pretty much common knowledge. But the government don't care. 
but uh, might be good reason. They do things for a reason. So they're bringing our name up, George. So what do we do? Feed him Keefe D. He's no good black person. They don't give a shit about him. They used him already, so why not use him to the final thing? Send him in prison the rest of his life. He's a criminal, ain't he? Keefe D's a criminal. How many people have you think Creek Keefe D shot or killed? You, if he didn't shoot Tupac, or if he did, do you think he, that's the only motherfucker he's shot at and killed? I don't. He just don't seem like the type. And then if you're a big baller in a big gang, you had to put in work. You wouldn't have been respected unless you did. So, it ain't hard to figure out. That, that brings me to this, because uh, you, you actually have a point, because the book came out. Did you read it? The, yeah, I read, read, yeah, I read, yeah, I had to read it because I needed to be yeah, informed. Of about course. What, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But the, the reason why I say that, and the reason, because the book came out, and then there was no arrest. Oh. After the book came out, it was only until he kept speaking about the same situation right. over and over on various platforms I when I felt like, you know, okay, the book is out. So why? Yeah, why I didn't get arrested. Yeah, 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 I didn't, I didn't understand. That. I don't, I still don't either. Yeah. And let's be honest. He was on every week from Vlad to everybody. He was just jumping around doing podcasts. And then he would slip up sometime and he would let you know how he felt he felt about Tupac which is kind of a dead giveaway. If you watch them all again, they're very hard for me to watch because I'm looking at a lying fat fuck and I don't really want to look at them. You know, excuse me. Uh, I forget people, kids might be watching. I'm sorry. I mean, you, That's what I think of these people. Your, your feelings are valid. Like I said, your son was murdered and, and you constantly reminded of that um, day in and day out. Yeah, well, so, he, so what is he going to get? He's going to get some more time? Yeah. He's lived a good life. What is he, 60, 50, 70? do 20 years maybe he might not do that he might get a lawyer you never know and get out most people uh say why didn't they arrest keefe d years ago based on the confession in this book do you think most people fail to realize that keefe d was protected under the proffer agreement and what that actually meant yeah i don't think they know i don't think people still don't know you know, it's just that that's the way the government used. Look at what they do. They, they let a motherfucker who killed 19 people walk just to get one. So that's what they do. It's whatever their agenda, whatever their goal, whatever their target, they'll let so much shit go. And that's what, that's what happened, I think. Mm. You know? So, yeah, most people, you don't think most people knew. They don't still know. They right. have no idea. All they hear is what they heard. Two months ago, it was Orlando Anderson. Now it's Keefe D. Tomorrow it'll be Puffy. Then it goes on and on and on. So the misinformation campaign has got to muddy the waters. If exactly. But uh, I don't think they still ain't even said death row. A lot of people have. A lot of people don't death row do the ball. Most people don't. But that's neither here nor there. So you believe that death row was involved? There's no doubt in my mind. I go to my grave, believe in that. Along with LAPD, the Justice Department, LAPD, a few judges in Vegas. Can't murder nobody like that without having this set up, bro. You just can't. But everybody knows. I'm not saying that nobody don't know already. They just never verbalized it maybe as much. He does get sued. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Uh, when Tupac was in the hospital in Las Vegas, were you made aware of any death threats that he was receiving at that time? Yes. I sat my ass in the car right next to his window. It was a terrible spot. The window was ground level. His window, it was his head right there. If you was after him, you could have easily got him. So a couple of us would get in the car and sit. The window was right there. We would sit right there. I just, but we found that was all bullshit, eh? Wasn't no death threats. That was Suge Knight and them putting that shit out. There was nothing like that. I asked Suge Knight for a good. He come when he saw me in Chow. He literally was started. A fiend said, this is Tupac's father. 
belly guard in each chunk. Because I looked like Pac a lot back then. You know, you've seen the picture. But the Stalins, I didn't pay attention to it then. But later on down the road, maybe it did strike him. Because I said, I talked to you, and I walked away with him. I said, okay, let me bend your ear for a minute. You heard about the threats. You know, they already put a hit on my son. I need some technical equipment from you. Technical equipment is a piece. And he said, okay. Then I'll never forget. Maybe about half an hour later, he sends Hammer, the dancer, to me and say, Shook said he got it. You don't have to worry about it. We take care of it. I was like, you just told me you was going to do that. Now you just send this little flunky mother over to say no. But then you don't put the pieces together. But then there was no threat anyway. There was no threat. There was no threat. Uh, Jada Pinkett said in her book that Suge Knight had Tupac ashes delivered to Jasmine Guy's house. Did you know anything about that? Hell no. And were you given any of Tupac's ashes? No. I still can't. You know, why would you burn a motherfucker the next day? I've never, even if you had a ceremony, nobody gets burned the next day except Vikings and Trojans. And that's the mystical old school stuff. You know what I'm saying? Not, yeah, you're allowed for some. But, but I don't know. That might have been some other stuff. That might have been some DNA trying to destroy shit. Not knowing that it was already established. I'm the father. So basically, in her cremating Tupac. That's what I think. I don't think that mean, she was trying to yeah, destroy Yeah, but let's be honest. Let's be, I don't want to bring it up. But since you brought up about the cremation. I don't understand how you can just constantly lie your whole life to an individual kid that his father's dead. That's got to be the hardest, most serious, hurtful lie that there is on the planet to a child. Not a child who didn't speak of his dad, but a child who often spoke of, which would say, I wish I had a dad. I might have been different. Women raised me, vice versa, versa. Then to learn that the dad tried to reach out and you gonna block like a linebacker? What is that? What's that about? So now you compounding that lie. You compounding them actions. And you can get all the dear mamas and all the aggulations you want. You were his mother. His mother was the greatest rapper of all time. But you made a mistake. And it was a big mistake. Supposing, I wasn't there for a long part of his life, but that little short part of time that we could have had together. And I often think about this. Tupac might have lived. He might not have felt the need to go to this fat fuck out there who treated him like a father or whatever he thought he was. I know how he thought. We, we always wanted accept, accept, uh, acceptance. I'm the same way. I moved around. My mother died when I was six. I lived in five different households before I became 12. So the same thing that Pac went through. You're always looking for acceptance. You're the new kid on the block. You want to be like, nobody wants to come to a new city and be this like. So it, he was the same way. And he thought by going to death row, he had a family. Because the other people didn't treat him. Who, who, who did he have before? You got the East Coast. Now you started some shit with them. You need a family. You just pick the most craziest motherfucker there is to pick. Death Row. Everybody says, oh, if I'd have known, I would have told him not to sign with Death Row. The reputation. He was in a hellhole. He was in jail. Motherfucker said, you want to come out and throw you a rope? You're going to grab it. You don't care who belongs to play. You're going to grab it. I'm a grown man. I can deal with you. Always say, whatever happens, I'll be all right. But I'm getting out of here. I'm going to do three hours with this bad boy. I do it. I can knock it out, which he did right quite quickly. He never saw funds for it, but he did it real quickly. I heard Defo owned about $10 million. $10 million, probably been more. Yeah. Don't get me started on this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I don't like From what you understand, and your observation from the hospital in Las Vegas, do you think there was anything more that the doctors could have done to save Tupac? No, they tried. I don't think it was the doctor's thing. I think it was a 
question of whether we're going to continue the rest of the year, trying to keep them alive. That was one thing. And I wasn't there. I was on my way back to the hospital, but I couldn't really speak on it. To what I heard later, that kind of disturbed me, particularly that let him go. Let him go where? And not the way to go. It's death. It's it. I don't give a fuck. Fucking three quarters of Tupac. A half of Tupac. A quarter of Tupac is better than some of these motherfuckers out here. I don't give you one arm, one leg, one lung. I don't think that's a decision for another. Not unless it's ir, you know, you just can't bring him back. And that could have been, I heard he went out a couple of times, flatline. I'm just a continually beating on the chest type dude. You know, I'm probably going to do it until they pull me off. That's the way I feel. So I had trouble with that, let him go. So when I got there, he had died. I just got there. Because I was gone, then I kind of slowed down, pulled to the side of the road when I heard on the radio that he had just died. So I, I was just driving around for a minute, and then I went to the hospital. After Keefe D's arrest, based on the statements that he made about Sean Puffy Combs wanting Tupac and Shug Knight home before the incident in Las Vegas, do you think Sean Puffy Combs should be investigated? You got no proof. I don't think they got no proof. And it's just one word of a lie for another lie. So who? Who's going to believe him? What 12 going to believe him? What judge is going to believe him? Bring up his background. And who's going to believe him? And that is fact he's trying to get out of what he's in now. Who's going to believe him? So, so you're saying basically Keith D lacks credibility. Or, or any credibility. He's a lying scoundrel. Who will believe him? Man made his bed, now he got laid. Like you didn't, weren't involved. Whether it was your nephew, or whether it was you. You were in the car. You were in the car. Supposedly. So you, 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 you think there's a little bit of doubt to that too? Well, it might have been. I just think the way the thing was set up. So you think that he would, so I, I can't, me personally, I can't see the logic in that. So you think that he would go and confess all of these? No, I think he was in the car. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I just threw that out there. Threw that out there. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. I wanted to be, to, to, to be clear, you know, uh, yeah. in regards to that. So yeah. thank you. Keefe D admitted in the infamous interview with Greg Cady that he personally saw and met with Sean Puffy Combs twice the day that Biggie was murdered. Do you find it ironic that Keefe D would place himself in both places in Las Vegas and in Los Angeles the night Tupac was killed and then the night that Biggie was killed also? I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Strange, but I, I can't call it, bro. I can't call it. I, I, don't, I don't have any uh, strength in Kading's credibility, because first he said it was Orlando Anderson. Him and his other guy is so close, you can't believe neither one of them. So who knows? But he's the LAPD. You got to remember that, too. The, he came after the other guy was there who had some other ideas, and he mysteriously left this planet. Then they put him in charge. You mean, you mean Russell Poole? Yeah. Oh. But that's, that's, that's neat. We can get to that, but we don't have to. Uh, I have no, I have no, uh, cre I, I have no faith in his credibility. And that Greg Cady. Yeah. Remember he came out, I solved the, uh, two box Shakur Biggie murders or something. So yeah, it really is ridiculous. Shit. So you, you think that most of what's been going on is basically a, uh, it's all part of the same plan. It's part, a, a part of a show yeah. or people trying to muddy the war. So I'm trying to gain fame. Look, look, look how many shows he's been on. Since that, telling everybody's trying to statue onto his star for whatever reason. But look, when they say or use them or come up with them, they get on YouTube, they get a book deal, they do this, they do that, they become someone to talk about. And their small, intricate part with my son is so redundant, stupid, but they ride with it like it's. The savior, you know, like they did something, like they're with someone. 
but they're not. They just intertwined with Pac, and that was it. That was it. They're funny people. They really are funny people. In fact, a lot of people that talk about Tupac have never met him. I know. Then the things they say, I've heard people say, he spoke to me in the fucking uh, hospital room. Nigga, I was there every day. He couldn't speak. He was in the deuce coma. He had this shit down his throat. He had to be a fucking ventriloquist to speak to you. It's ridiculous. But you, you hear these stories. Everybody's got something to say. I went to see him. Well, only family went to see him. Technically. What was the situation involving the security in Las Vegas? Terrible. Security was big time when Shook was there. Shook him walking out with little bandages on his head. No, we was on a, was on a bed, like a little bandage on his head. Like he was a fucked up, like he had been shot in the head. And with a piece of glass from the bull ricochet off of the gunshot entry to the car. And he got just a little thing. His whole security was up there. Reggie was up there. All the security guards, his mother, his father. When I got up there the next day, I never, I, I didn't see him for three days, shit, man. And the security was gone? Hell, you had two guys that was outside the door. And I think they worked for shit, man. They worked for shit. They weren't security, though. They was asking me every time I came out, did he say anything? Fuck it, he said he got the thing in his mouth. I didn't know what they were talking about. They want to know, did he identify whoever it was? Because obviously these two guys know what Suge Knight knows. That it was part of his detail who weren't around that particular night. But, it, but as far as the security for Tupac? No, it was nothing there. Why would guys have to sit in the car? Why wouldn't you move them to a more secure area? The Las Vegas police wouldn't even come. They tried to get them to come. They had one of them skaters or somebody. They had squad cars, people inside, like crazy, protecting her. Greatest rapper in the world, you can't put one patrolman, one squad car outside. It's new information. Well, that was I the fact. I, yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, yeah, they that's tried. why I asked you. They tried, yeah, they, they would call them. Yeah, some other people told me they, 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 they would try and reach out. They was trying to reach out to the Lost Faces. Yeah, and, and they it, wouldn't come. They wouldn't come? Wow. After Tupac joined Death Row, do you think law enforcement intentionally began to target death row based on Tupac's militant mindset and influence or from what they would consider Tupac to be like a rebel rouser? I don't think they, they like Tupac, no doubt in my mind. Now, whether they're going to hold that against death, death row, that's another thing. Because I don't know if death row really liked it, but it was bringing in sales to death row. And that was all right to them. That was just about good for them. They didn't really care. So I can't answer that one. I just can't. So you don't think that, like, when Tupac came no, in, heightened the awareness? No, it was anymore. No. What did they do if it was? Well, once again, that investigation. They yeah. always had investigation. Well, well, before Tupac got there, that's what before, they did. Before yeah. he got there, the investigation? Yeah, a lot of two, yeah. Okay. A lot of shit, drugs, a lot of shit. A lot okay. of shit. And uh, it just never came to fruition. They just never did nothing about it. And as a matter of fact, it just dawned on me. In one of Tupac's songs, he said, the feds are watching. Know this being dope sold, but I ain't the one selling. Oh, yeah. Makes you wonder, huh? It makes you wonder whether he knew about the investigation. Oh, I know. But yeah, yeah. That he, was that was his his uh, lyrics. He said, I he know, said what, no, no, know that there's being dope sold, but I ain't the one selling. No good. Yeah. And so that's the reason why I asked that question in the, in, you know, his, his mindset, the influence that he had on the public, the record sales that he had. When you talk about elections, you talk about running for office, you're talking about, you know, people listening to what he had to say versus now here he is under this label. And, you know, he put out, he put out his record and the record does 5 million records in three months. Yeah. But I, I still think that was a benefit to them because the majority of Tupac's sales and death row sales was in the beef business. It was them arguing with one another. That's what we were selling. Not Tupac telling black people to organize, put a pool of our money together. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's get unified. Let's stop the police brutality. Let's stop the poor housing, the inadequate education, the bad roads, the bad schools, the bad houses, the bad nutrition. They would have came after him harder, which he wanted to bring up all those things, but he just didn't get a chance to. Everybody goes through periods. 
he could understand where he was on that particular period of his life. From here, absolutely nothing. One set of clothes, funny looking kid in the family because they didn't look like nobody. Moving around, trying to make friends. He makes a good record. One of his poems, he makes one movie. He's big time. They love him. They really love him. And it's like, yeah, I can live like this. You go on for a few years, you run a few trouble. Let's be honest, he ran into some stupid shit. Dumb shit. Yeah. Stupid shit. Hitting the motherfucker, everybody just see it. You don't do shit like that. But that was just that endless, that growth. It takes every, everybody has to go through. We all make mistakes. Some are just worse than others. Let's be honest. Some are more costly than others. Luckily, his weren't that costly. Until he went to death row. That was costly. Actually, going there wasn't costly. It was him trying to leave there. That's what became costly. On Wednesday, June 7th, 2023, Tupac received his posthumous star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. How come you didn't attend the event? Or were you even invited? I was never invited. I've never been invited to not one Tupac thing. Hall of Fame in Brooklyn, a couple other things. Just, just never. But that's all gone through the house, the foundation. They, unfortunately, are living the life off of whatever peanuts the company's giving them. Then they're, they're not, for I can see, fulfilling any of his legacies. I think they started a clothing line one time. They had flowers. But it was ridiculous. Puppy, he has no substantial reminder of his existence here on earth. What have they done? That bullshit library that's lasted, what, two, three years? They haven't even put out a video. They haven't even play, played none of his music. When's the last time you heard a new Tupac song? Except on YouTube. Post you, he, oh, he had 100 and 200 fucking songs he hadn't released. And you were in charge of all that, and that's the best you could leave us with? It's all eyes on me? And dear mama, done by a motherfucker that didn't like to. If you'd ask Tupac today and it's great, well, he ain't got no great. <laughs> would you want Alan Hughes to do a special on him? What do you think he would say? Hell no. Why would I want that motherfucker to do anything on me? Not for nothing. Did I heard there for a, a Grammy or something? Yeah, he's nominated for a Grammy this year uh, for dear mama and being in that uh, actual uh the documentary of Dear Mama. Oh, okay. So well, he's he's nominated for a Grammy for that. But the uh, the star thing, I think, it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what Tupac represents: a star on some concrete and a name in Oakland on a street side. That's what they give all our martyrs. Malcolm got names all throughout every ghetto in America. Martin Luther King got names, both killed by the government, both dead, dead, dead. But they give you a name of a street. And a star. Tupac Shakur is nominated for his first Grammy for Dear Mama in the Dear Mama docuseries that oh. was directed by Alan Hughes. Just, yeah. If Tupac were alive, what do you think would be his thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think he would have to recognize that he had a great mother. She raised him through all the misgivings they had, even the lies and we all make mistakes. That's just a very long mistake when you lie to your child. But we all make mistakes. We all do dumb shit. So I think he would have saluted her. He got on the mic and gave her all the love he could possibly give. But I think in his heart, he would never forgive her. You know, none of us had really great parents. My father, I didn't see for years. But he was my dad. When I saw him, he was my dad. That's just the way it was. He didn't have no father. He had, my dad had no father. He never knew him, never saw him. He don't know what he's uh, It takes a dad to raise a dad. You have to learn that shit. So you're basically saying your father didn't have a father. No, no he was left on the door. Right, so hey. your father in fathering you didn't have a... Yeah, uh, uh, right? that's why I'm and, a little and, fucked and, up. And, right, and then you're basically saying in Tupac's life, based on this the situation is, that happened to you guys... The continual it was a continued. His mother left him on his thing when he was an infant. I don't even know her, her grandmother. So he doesn't... That side of the family I know nothing about. Aunts, uncles, cousins. You mean the Feeney side? No, my dad's Your side. Your dad's side, okay. So that's where he come, but he became a good man. He, came, he did what he had to do as a man. Bought a house, was in the war. He drove behind Patton. You know, gasoline treatment. 
Patton's Third Army while running through New York. He drove the gas that supplied the tanks to Pat. To General Pat. Yeah. So imagine being shot at when you got a tank full of gas, got gallons of gas behind. That bravery. Well, you don't hear nothing about. It. Not a damn thing. Good man. Came home, had a job, truck driver, been all over the country. He's been in 46 states, except North Dakota, South Dakota, and Hawaii, Alaska, taking people's furniture. United Airlines, somebody wants to move from Minnesota to California, send the truck. Be gone two weeks. But that was a lot of money back then. Car, we had a house, but I don't have no dad. We just don't see him because he hustling. So there's a lot of reasons why things happen the way they happen. Absolutely. And that's why I think might have happened with Pop and me too also. Because you were running, you were wor working for one of those companies also that uh, that you explained in the last interview. Oh, yeah, but there, it's some things I could have did a little better too. There's some, some things. In terms of fathering. And I have to own up to that as a man. I appreciate that honesty, man. A lot well, of people. Like I wasn't I the best of father. A lot of things, the reason for it. But uh, you always look back, you could have been a better father. I could have been. Anyway. I got two children with dad. And you always think about maybe if you were a little better that father, they might not be dead. You have to live with that. Yeah. Might not have made no difference, but it might have. Absolutely. Absolutely. On November 5th, 2023 in Oakland, a stretch of an Oakland street was renamed after Tupac. Does that make you proud to know that one of the places that Tupac called home honored him in that way? No, didn't. I saw his typical grabbing a piece of the star, but I'm sure everybody wants to grab a piece of the star. We're the biggest rapper. So let's own up to him. He's ours. It wasn't yours when your two cops beat him up to death. They haven't beat him to death for jaywalking. And he had to sue you for the hundred million. You ended up paying like forty-eight million. Something you paid thirty million. How much was it? For, like, uh, like uh, I think forty thousand yeah, dollars. So it was very cheap. I take yeah. that back. It yeah. wasn't me. It was forty thousand. It was only yeah. cheap. But it was an admittance of wrong that you beat an innocent black man for jaywalking, and you brutalized. So here comes what thirty, forty years now. Let's name a street after. <laughs> I think that's just so ironic. Yeah. So you don't think that that's a, 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 no. a great way to remember him? No. It's the same thing as the naming the street for, for Malcolm and Martin Luther King. And people don't really know what they really stood for. It's actually the average black man about Malcolm. We know because we're old. These little jitterbugs, rocky heads, they don't know about no Malcolm. Yeah. Ask them to be the stupidest rapper on the radio. They could recite that a hundred times. So you, do you think that's intentional, that information being lost? Oh, of course it's lost. They're trying to take more and more away from them. Hmm. They don't even want to teach why slavery. So what's that tell you? Yeah. You got a point. Look at Florida. Uh, all the red states have gone that way now. Oh, we fucked up. We did a lot of bad things, but we shouldn't tell them. <laughs> we, we won't say what we did, you know, how we took the land from the Indians and this and that. I ain't got to say it. Everybody knows. Some people call it progress. Other people call it genocide. That's how you look at Depend it. On, depending on what side you look at. What side you look at. Yeah. Like Thanksgiving means a lot to different people. Native Americans, they don't fucking like no Thanksgiving. Black people have a Thanksgiving. I ain't worried about that. I can't say Right. Before our last interview, people had formulated an opinion based on a narrative that was pushed out about your situation involving your son Tupac Shakur and your guys' relationship. Since our last interview, a lot of people have shown love and some even expressed a newfound respect for you. How does that make you fit? Nice. I appreciate that. It's good to be accepted and understood for a situation that you had nothing to do with. You had a little something to do with because you weren't around as much as you should. Other circumstances prevented you from being with him years, for years. We're talking five, maybe five years. That's that's unacceptable. So it makes you feel good. Yeah. If finally to hear, you know what I get? It's good to hear your side of the story. And I heard one say, I could never hear, dear mom, I will never take that serious again. 
the song. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have said that. Others said I've, I got. I look at her different. Other people have experienced and said what you said. Your family, your past relationship in your family. A lot of them have explained their situation, but my mother lied to me, or my daddy lied. Vice versa. Either way, it's a lie. I don't care which side does it. So that's kind of good that they finally can see the truth. That's all. And I appreciate you for doing that. It's a devil. They always say devil raids interview. <laughs> What I, what I find, you know, like I said, the reason why it even before me and you had a chance to meet and we have been talking for over a time, a good time period. Um, I thought that it would help in that manner yes. because there were so many people in our community, whether it be female, male. Well, in, 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 in our, a lot of communities, if you will, but mainly in our community, um, father wasn't there, disenchantment between mother and father, whatever the situation was that somebody with the notoriety and the respect of a Tupac Shakur and what he had overcome could look at that and look at him and say, you know what, if Tupac went through that and he became what he became, then I can, by the power of example, I can be a better person too. I agree. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. But I'll give you credit. You Thank were one of the first ones who broke several little stories, little ones about the birth certificate. How she lied on the birth certificate. She didn't know who the father was. Well, who, why would you give your son to a man for the week, couple of weeks, if you didn't think he was the father? Right. It's just ridiculous shit, you would say. Then on the, at the end when he died, we were in court. What do you call the papers? Uh, the probate. Probate papers. That little section where you say father and mother, you got your name, then you alleviate. I just left you six hours ago. We was in the gold nugget room crying together over our lost son. And now I'm dead? What caused that? Could that have had them dollar signs you see coming? Isn't there enough dollar signs? I wouldn't even think about no shit like that. I'm thinking our son's dead. Dead. And you thinking about deceit and fraud. So that's what that is. So recently, um, before we did this interview, you were kind of reluctant because you had had some health issues. Serious health issues. Um, can you explain to the viewers what you were going through? Uh, I caught maybe about a month ago, PCP Lamont, one of the worst kinds there is. I had so many doctors. I went there just because I couldn't breathe or walk. My oxygen had went down so low in my blood because I had so much mucus on my lung. That's the pneumonia. It wouldn't, it was so thick, it wouldn't allow the air to, to, to go through my lungs to spread through the body. And they gave me so many steroids, so many IVs, so many antibiotics. Uh, I've had one, two, I had about four doctors at one time. They saved my life. I don't give a fuck what you say about praying all that. I know it's good. Excuse me, people. I know what you like to your, to your God. But science, medical science saved my goddamn life. I'm still weak, so I wasn't going to do it. I don't, I get a little winded, you know what I'm saying? I, shit, remember I had cancer? <laughs> they took a half of my lungs, so with that, this is like makes me lightheaded and tired quick. But uh, I said, what the hell? That kind of made me think. I said, Billy, you ain't finished the book. People don't know the whole story. Some other things you got to say before you go. The kids, you start thinking about a lot of shit when you think you might be checking out this motherfucker. And you, you just accept it. But you said, no, I'm fighting this shit. So pump me, doc. They were shooting me up with shit. It got me good, man. I, I, I was on oxygen, man, for about a week and a half. Oxygen. Daddy's these motherfuckers come in here with everything I need to go to the bathroom, take a shower and all that. So they saved my life. It was very serious, though. I just wanted to let you know, you got a solid for me for what I'm doing this. Dang, you know, I appreciate you. Dang. But I, I didn't really want to do nothing. I appreciate you, too. And you, you said that um, you, you, you were about to leave the hospital and they called your wife. Called my wife. She said, boy, if you sit your ass down and let them take care of you. And I was about the third day. So they kept me another three, four days. Very heavy, very, very, very heavy. Steroids. You know, you can get hooked on steroids. I didn't. You got to wean yourself off them bad boys. But they do help. Because without them, I don't think I would have made it. So they give you a sense of normalcy? Yeah, I was so tired. 
I was so weak, I could barely walk. That's how bad this pneumonia is. You could barely walk. Going to the bathroom, everything was a pain. It was a, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. And you don't really broadcast it. You, you say a little something on Facebook, but you just let everybody know, I'm a little down right now. When you move on, you don't tell them how close it was or what it could have done. We all got issues. Everybody in America got an issue. Just got to fight it, right? That's all. Got to do what they tell you to do. Tell you don't eat no pork, don't eat no pork, motherfucker. You got high blood pressure, don't do that, don't eat. You got cholesterol, don't eat no seafood. You, you just got to start thinking about shit. You just got to try and do the right thing and fight back. Give it a chance. You know, that brings me to um, another thing that Tupac said, and the song changes. He said, we got to change the way we live. I remember. We got to change the way we eat. We got to change the way how we treat each other. Yeah. And the fact that you're talking about that right now, we got it, it even makes it more um, in your face, if you will. Yeah. And and you being here, like I said, more importantly, I appreciate you. I appreciate, um, you know, like you say, through medical science and and. You know, in the, prayer, the, I take the in, prayer. In prayer, yeah. Everybody and, would say I'm praying for you. Absolutely, I took that shit. Absolutely, <laughs> give me all of that. Absolutely, and but, um, and like you said, by the grace of God, hmm. yeah, and good doctors and things like that. So I appreciate that. You and you appreciate the little things uh, when you go through stuff like that. You really do. You start looking at shit a little different, and think that you thought were important weren't that important. People you thought were important weren't really that important. Not for nothing. You know, nobody calls. You know, they refuse to Yeah. Your core. Right. But you knew that was your core before. So, that was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like I said, everything is in time. Like they say, time will reveal everything. Yeah, ain't hey, that the truth? <laughs> I see more and more I come out 27 years with this brother, yeah, with this man. Yeah. But it's good. I appreciate it. That's why I watch those videos on YouTube. I said, maybe I could pick up something about my boy that I, know, I didn't know that about. That you didn't know, yeah. A couple things I catch, most of it's just trivia, personal experience that they had. But then some stuff they let me understand how he was. And I got to see he was very similar. I mean, just his behavior, outgoing. He did some stupid shit. We all do stupid shit. <laughs> we all do stupid shit. Suge Knight has never identified anyone who was in the car that night that him and Tupac were shot at in Las Vegas. On Breakbeat Media recently on Shug's podcast, Shug said that Big Dre was one of the people in the white Cadillac. And like in our last interview, you had said that you didn't believe that Orlando Anderson was the shooter. And Shug reiterated the same thing on his podcast. How does it make you feel to know that you and Shug Knight at least agree on that one thing? Nah, I have no feelings on it between you and I. None whatsoever. I think it's coincidental, you know, but it's for different reasons. I think he's still still trying to muddy the water. You know, either you did see or you didn't see. Come on, man. Fuck out of here. I think the question should be, why did a guy who lives in Las Vegas, you ever see the tire on the Beamer? I've looked at it, but I haven't looked at it properly. Look at it next time. Right. All the rims are blown out. I'm not just blown out from running or rubber, blown out because it jumped the divider, trying to make a U-turn away from the hospital. How do you live in a town, reside in a town, party in a town, and don't know where the hospital is? Got to go the opposite way of the hospital. You know, going, I understand. That's why them tires is like that. That's what makes me lay a lot of suspicion on this. Why would you go the opposite way of the hospital? Because he didn't die. And he said some last words to you. He talked to you. He couldn't breathe. He ain't talk to you. I just the lies. I just get tired of the lies, bro. I just get tired of the lies. And they keep lying, and then people keep listening to him and repeating them. Like it's fact. Give us the YouTube, the, the headlines. It's just ridiculous, man. You mean the titles? The titles, yeah. yeah. The titles of the video. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. They can catch people's uh, imagination with that, and they end up watching it. So many views, you could see it. Yeah. Where are you going to go? You know, the reason why I asked that question, 
because he never mentioned anybody in this right. 27 years. But that in, 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 in being in the car and the fact that he just recently copped to that and mentioned that was alarming to me. And so me and me asking you that. And like I said, in him saying that he didn't he, that Orlando wasn't the shooter and you had reiterated that in the last interview. This is the reason why I asked. And he said that, well, Big Dre was in the car. This is the first time he's ever said yeah, anybody. I, I understand what you, your, your yeah, point is. Yeah. Who can rationalize the the, 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 the the mentality of a liar? Yes, he's, he says so much shit. I, I can't give any credibility to whatever he says, bro. You can't ask me no questions about him, but I, don't, I can't put it together. Unless whether I feel he was involved in what I think he was involved. Aside from that, yeah, but uh, I understand the question. I understand what you were trying to get to. Right. I can't answer that. I just can't answer that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Alan Hughes had made a statement that got backlash in regards to Snoop Dogg dimming his light so that Tupac could shine when Tupac went to record under death row. Do you feel like that's an accurate statement? No, I don't know about that. He did what now? Repeat. Okay, let me, I'm going to give you the. Yeah. So, Alan Hughes made a statement saying that when Tupac came over to death row, I might yeah. ask you a question again. I'm oh, sorry. yeah, I got, oh, I, okay, I got okay. what you're saying. Okay, that, 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 he's kind of like, you know, you yeah. know, hunkered it down so Tupac could shine. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask that question. Go ahead. All right. Um, Alan Hughes had made a statement that got backlash in regards to Snoop Dogg dimming his light so that Tupac could shine when Tupac went to record under death row. Do you feel like that's an accurate statement? Well, I think that there, was, there was some residual effect when Pac came there. But you got to remember, Snoop wasn't, wasn't no superstar. He was a star. But Dre had left, and he really ain't never had nothing as great as he did as he did with Dre. Not that he's not talented, making a lot of money, very commercial. He sells everything from fair do to hamburger to potato chips. He's a fucking regular walking billboard. He asked me about the substance of this music today, now. It's shit. What's he singing about? Dipsy Doodle and bullshit? Come on. None of the rappers, they've become very commercialized. They put you on TV now to sell hamburgers and chicken. It's a shame. But anyway, now, P. I don't know. So you believe that they complemented each other in their own way? I don't know. I can't answer. I don't know. You think so? I... Personally, I don't really, I think that Tupac was Tupac before Tupac got to death row. And so Tupac was already a star in movies. He was already a platinum uh, artist. And so when he got to death row, I don't think that um, personally, I know what you're, you're asking me, I don't think I Snoop had to saying. dim his light at no, all. I, I think Tupac's light was Tupac's light. And his light's always going to be shine bright. Yeah, yeah, his light was his light. He bright. walks into a room and lights up. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's his personality. And not only that, but just the, when you talk about record sales. So when Tupac, yeah, when Tupac came out with his record. Yeah, he was the star. Yeah, no record had Everybody done Everybody jumped on. Who won't ride with you? Yeah. I just don't like the little bullshit riff they had. Well, Snoop had to hold a knife with nothing right on the plane. That's that uh, bullshit that Shook Knight does. One against the other. Divide and conquer. Guess all he did. All, 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 all of Pac's board, maybe except for the outlaws, suffered under that bullshit. You know, strip him down, talk bad, nasty to him. And that sometimes I, I don't understand how Pac put up with that. I just don't. You know, not for nothing, I just don't really understand that. Sometimes we get caught up in the bullshit. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't speak up like we should. I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? He had to see it. You know he did. I know he was recording a lot, but that was no place. Most, most good rappers never wanted to go up there. Pac would invite him to come on up, cut a piece. He said, no. He said, something about that place. Just didn't like the reputation. That the they reputation, had. the beat right, down. Right. Yeah. The cold stairs. Right. The dumb shit. I'm going to make music. I don't need this. As Tupac's father, how do you feel about your son being such an iconic figure, not just known for his music and acting, but also known as a Black Panther taught revolutionary? I'm proud of that. You know, I'm glad. I just wish he had stayed on that subject, but fortunately he did not. Uh, I think he was going to come back to that subject. 
because of what had happened in his life, false charges here. I think that with East Coast, West Coast, the conflict had ran its gambit. I think that was going to be over with. I think he was going to see the light once he went to some of the companies that he wanted to form once he left death row, which he never did, which we wish he could have. We're going to be more progressive back to his established progressive rap, that type of thing. It never occurred. It never occurred. He just never did. And and do you do you credit do you give any credit to Afini for that for for instilling the the, the Black Panther that whole thing and in meeting you and you know. yeah maybe so the early part of his life right. I think a couple of scars might have been left on his heart later on in his life that she left him but that initial. Uh, indoctrination to reality about politics was very good for his foundation. It's evident in his music, in his personality, in his soul, and what he believes. He still believes for his people. He still believes for his people. If you remember Tupac, you don't remember for all this hip-hop, East Coast, West Coast thing. Some will remember for him that I fucked your wife, but others will remember for some very serious stuff, you know, beginning of his uh, career. Yeah, I think that 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 song "Hit 'Em Up" is I didn't like it's that. one of those things that yeah. you like. You said the 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 fuck your wife thing. I don't think he should have did it. Right. <laughs> I don't think he should have did it. But he was mad. Sometimes when human beings get mad, they do dumb shit. Do you think there was a concerted effort to undermine Tupac's career after he had got off with the shooting in Atlanta? No, I think you had the right wing. Uh, Calvin Butts, Quail, the black girl, we don't even hear her Delores, name. Delores, yeah. see Delores Tucker. The political pressure. Look what they did to Ice-T prior. They got him playing cop for the longest time in American history. He ain't made a record since. They can't apply pressure to you. I think they applied pressure to Interscope. Because if you notice, everything that was done for Tupac by Interscope was done through death row. They wanted to act like they weren't supportive of him, but they put up the money. They didn't put the money up for it. They put the money up for his bail, but they didn't put it up initially. Look how much time he served. You could have bailed him out. Oh, a million, five years, rich people have to get bailed out every day. They'd be smiling at the judge. They'd be like, okay. Well, to be perfectly honest, on on like I said, this is something that you might not have been aware of. But remember when he went to jail, that they filed an appeal right after. His sentencing, yeah. the judge denied it. So the reason why he had to go to jail for that long was because he appealed it. Once he got the appeal and he was granted the appeal, that's when they came. They did, you trying to say they did the appeal right away? Yeah, they know he appealed. Tupac appealed it right away. He was now. Did they, 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 didn't they put him in jail right away? No, but see, this is the thing. So when he went to jail, when they when they sentenced him, the day of the sentencing, uh, his attorney filed a motion for an appeal. Right. A, a immediate motion. The judge denied it. Okay. So then Tupac had to, he had to go and appeal that. So he had to go to prison. Oh, but they didn't give him the bond, so he had to appeal that. Once the appeal, he won the appeal, Tupac won the appeal, that's when Interscope came and got him. And how long was the appeal won? Um, the time? process, like, it was like about how much time he was in jail? For about that much time. It's and, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's, he's trying to say that it wasn't available? Yeah, they couldn't. they couldn't get him out. And so, like I said, when you, when, you, when you understand that f f perspective, and, but that's that you, but Mr. Garland, you were right, because that was the narrative. The narrative was Interscope didn't come get him out. But like I said, once I did the deep dive in the research, the research showed that they did when they could get him out. Once he got the appeal, they did come get him out. And they paid the 1.4 and then they, the Suge thing and then all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. So no, but like I said, in, in that, in that sense, um, you know, that was the that was the gist of it. And it took me doing research to find that out. Right. So I'm 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 imparting that to you right now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Do you believe officially or unofficially there was some type of police involvement in the orchestration and assassination of your son Tupac Shakur? Involved in, in what is the orchestration of his assassination? Not, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one answer question. That's the one word answer, yes. You can go to all the details of what I believe. Doesn't really matter. It's still yes, no doubt. 
on many facets, LAPD, Vegas, and the government. You can't do that unless you have that. Not during the Mike Tyson fight in Vegas. There's gridlock through the whole town. No one Cadillac's going to get out of town undetected unless you pay. But that's neither here nor there. Are you satisfied with the Las Vegas Police Department's investigation and patience and finally making the arrest in the murder of your son, Tupac Shakur? No. They were told to do that. That's easy. And how hard is to arrest somebody when you see him on TV saying, I passed the guy a gun? What, one day a detective in, in, in his cubicle say, you know, he just broke the law, we could arrest him. I mean, let's be honest. It's, it's, it's the silliest, trivial-looking shit I've ever seen. I don't think it had nothing to do with it, except uh, being a puppet for them. That's what I think. So the press conference that they had, uh, you watched that, right? Yeah, I don't watch that shit. Mm. My mobile wife told me about it. What are they, they going to say? That Keefy D had the, we, we raided, raided his house, that he killed the guy. Can't believe neither one of them. So what are you going to do, bro? What are you going to do? Mm. If there was one thing that you wish your son Tupac should or shouldn't have done, let me do that again. If there was one thing that you wish your son Tupac Shakur should or shouldn't have done on September 7th, 1996, what would that be? Not to go to Las Vegas. Should never went to Las Vegas and they damn sure shouldn't initiate the fight. Why would the record director of the biggest company in black industry allow his star his number one money maker. You would have tackled him 10 yards out once you saw where he was running to. Y'all all follow. You seen the tape? They all follow him around. He's just clowning and acting up a fool and shit. Ain't paying attention to none of the environment. And somebody come whisper in his ear. Why didn't the person would whisper in the Shiv Knight's ear? Trade whatever his name was. Unless you wanted this individual to go over and initiate some fetch with him. Told him the guy with the chain who stole this over there. My son being gullible, he is fired up, happy, just saw a fucking Mike Tyson fight, feel like fighting. And then here come these clowns behind him, doing the same shit he just said. So one of the motherfuckers is grabbing his ass. I said, that's enough. And dragging his ass out of that fucking lobby. So it was a setup. It was a setup, bro. Set up, set up, set up. Shug Knight said that on September 7th, 1996, and I quote, that he had two of the best security guys on Tupac that night, but the head of security pulled them off of him. He also said that it didn't have to happen. Then he said he asked the security to send five more guys from Club 662 to guard and secure Tupac, but they sent nobody. How does that make you feel? Both of them are lies. Hard to believe either one of them. They both don't tell the truth. But like I said, uh, Reggie White Jr., he had just fired as the head of his security. He had fired Chug Knight and Death Row. He had fired David Kenner. He was leaving. My answer is why is he still doing security? for Tuba. That's what's troubling. And where was he when Suge Knight was supposed to get shot at? If Reggie is around two, uh, David, is, if Reggie is around Suge Knight all the time, always, why isn't he around them the night he gets shot at? This happens to be the same night you tell all those security guards to leave the guns on. Now, if you want to believe Suge Knight and think that Reggie has some involvement with it. I can't argue with Shug Knight on that one. But I ain't excusing his behavior either. You see what I'm saying? Not for nothing. But it's, 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 it's that's that lack of days ago shit my son would do. You get a, he just, he trusts, we trust people. 
and he should have never went. He had a bad feeling. He did not want to go to Vegas, and he should not have gone to Vegas. And he never rides with Shul. A lot of nevers there, and it was, and then it all ended up the way it did. As we discussed before, Tupac had refused to cooperate slash snitch on Biggie about the guns that were found in his hotel room in New York after that situation. Suge Knight, when asked if called, would he testify in the Keefe D murder trial involving your son Tupac Shakur, he said he would not. How do you feel about that? I don't know. You keep asking me questions about Suge Knight. I, don't, I got no feelings towards him. As far as I'm concerned, maybe, you know, he knows a little bit more about what happened than neither one of us, or both of us. So I can't answer that. I know he's a liar. So if he told me the truth, I don't know if I'd believe him. So what are you going to do? You have the visitors list from uh, Clinton Correctional Facility. Is Jada Pinkett on that list, to the best of your knowledge? And did Tupac ever express to you at any time that he asked Jada Pinkett to marry him? No, he never expressed that. I imagine she is. I didn't look at everybody. It's a lot. It's about that thing. It's a lot of people came to see him, but he needed that. Because nobody came to see him, he'd be locked in a six by nine cell for a long, long time. He's locked up 23 hours a day. He only gets out from 9 to 3. 9 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, if someone comes to visit him. If nobody comes to visit him, they don't let you out. So he likes people to come visit him, you know. So you, you never, he never expressed to you that? No. Yeah. yeah. No, he expressed that they were friends. He gave me that look, that Madonna look when I said, no, mind. He was all about Madonna's. What did I hear about you, Madonna? He did something real stupid. Well, what did he say about Madonna? They were together for a little while. Okay. He, 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 one of her talents, that's all. I don't want to go. Do you think that after Tupac played the character Bishop and Juice, that he somehow tried to become the character in real life? No, I think Hollywood portrayed him. as You know how Hollywood gets you and they see something that's markable, something that's uh, sellable. Uh, modern day, uh, what the guy does power? Forget his name. 50 Cent? Same thing. Last time you seen 50 Cent in, in Dear Mama movie or something that's not gangster selling drugs because he's remarkable. And then he can go on with that for the rest of his life because he's good at that. And they saw Tupac as that. And we need somebody charismatic to play the part of whoever we want a black individual to play the part of. And some of his roles was corny. I didn't like him in Bishop. Man, I ain't never seen nobody that. I seen niggas cold-blooded, but that's just instantly cold-blooded. Come on, man. In a minute, you're going to shoot your friend and then hate the other two, too? Come on, man. It's just, some things ain't right. And the one with the patch, he crazy in that. So I think the roles were geared. You mean bullet? Yeah, yeah. geared that way. See what I'm saying? And he wanted to stretch out. And he got stupid money. He did job. What's the first movie he made? Juice. $10,000. That's all he got. Movies made me. Yeah. They didn't pay you nothing. Yeah, Terrence Howard just talked about when he made Hustle and Flow. I, I heard about they, that. They only paid him $12,000. I heard about that. And the guy from Friday only paid a few amount too. Yeah, Chris Tucker. Yeah. 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 They just screw you. Like I said, we talk about Sugar Knight and Puffy screwing that out. It's, it's been going on for years. And they still do it. What is your fondest memory of your son Tupac Shakur? Smiling in the in, in Clinton visitation room, just cutting it up, just laughing, seeing them ivories looking back at me, showing my ivories, connecting. A good moment. I had them cleared. Remember, we didn't smoke no weed. We ain't in fucking prison. We ain't drinking no wine. Ain't no bitches around. Fucking distracted him. Just me and him chopping it up, talking, and. It seems like the years never, never came between us. You know how you can see a friend you ain't seen in a long time? Y'all pick up right where y'all in, talking to one another, talking about the same little silly shit, but it's laughable. That's where we're 
We didn't have a lot of memories, but the memories we had were good. And the memories we could have had was, I think, would have been much better. I really do. That's the fucking tormented shit I got to live with for the rest of my little life. My motherfucking mistakes. But at least I know I made them. Don't make anything better with those who I made them too. But I understand what happened and why I made them. I'm not glad that I did make them. But Pac, me and him, just laughing and joking. I never got to see him perform. I would have liked to. I would like to see him. You would have liked to see him perform live on stage? Make uh, 20,000 people scream. But I get enough of that. I, I see I see the love for him. Right. There's a video. Remember when George Floyd died? And he, that record came on about King The guy had the, had, the, had the little thing. Yeah, change. and the black, and yeah, the whole yeah. crowd went crazy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I remember that. See a cop kill a nigga, and he's a hero. Mm. Fit perfect. Yeah. I said, how, he's moved crowds 20 something years later. 20 something years later, bro. I think that might be the most fulfilling moment I have with my son, knowing the impact that he had on society. I see it every day, but it's, it's hard to interpret because all I see is a kid that I wish I had gotten to know more. My son, he's not right. Tupac. He's not, yeah, I don't see him as that. I don't want your autograph, motherfucker. Yeah, you, my, you my son. What's up, nigga? <laughs> Talk. <laughs> and we would, but I wish we had more time. And that's what I'm mad at. They took away that time. He was going to change, man. You got the better side of Tupac. That was just a, that was just a reflection of some negative shit. You got to remember, this nigga just got out of prison. Eight, nine months back. Just got out of prison. Will you be attending the murder trial of Keefe D in relation to your son Tupac Shakur? And from what you know of your son, do you think that he would want you to be there no. to be a representative of him? No. Somebody tried to get me to go there. Somebody who was in the party kept texting me, maybe you should go out there and represent and represent Tupac's family, since the Feeney never did. And I said, I want not be part of that side fucking stupid show. What am I going to give a press conference and do what? And say what? It's all, it's all fucking bullshit. It's just bullshit. No, to answer your question, I don't want to go look at that ugly motherfucker. I don't want to see him. I'm tired of hearing his name. And I don't like the way he talks. So we, whatever. What, what he might not. He might take another plea. You think we'll you think D is going to take a plea, a plea deal? Why do you think did. that? I don't think he's got a case. He doesn't admit it on case. He doesn't admit it on film. If they don't get him for direct murder, they got him with accessory. You gave somebody the gun. I was in the bank with this motherfucker. He's the one that stole the money. I just happened to be with him counting money. <laughs> or the drop. Yeah, yeah. you guilty. You killed me, so I don't know if I asked so surprised. Because I couldn't understand that while he was on for 20 some years. We should see him on there. I said, well, why is he still on TV? That proper agreement the government gave him. Then when the government decided that he wasn't useful anymore, throw him to the wolves. And everybody just started eating him up like it was. In fact, oh, you killed Tupac, stab him. Come on, man. The, report, the reports are... Um, that he's uh, been moved to protective custody. Oh, uh, yeah, no shit. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Those were the reports. Yeah. Can neither confirm for me yeah. or deny. Shows you how much little I follow. Right. These motherfuckers. Yeah. The useless. Yeah. I can't say I wish him well. It is not for Tupac for all the other motherfucking harm he's done on humanity. So, what are you going to do? Alan Hughes getting Tupac fired from the movie Minister Society after Tupac was the one who actually got the movie green lighted by the studio. No kidding. I didn't know that. What do you think about that? I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. At first I heard that. Yeah, he had, he had issues with this Alan Hughes guy. And I think Alan Hughes had issues with me. When I did the Dear Mama series, 
what what a, what a ridiculous waste of time that was. <laughs> uh, he came up to me before we shot and said, no, about that fight with your son, we both were very young. That's what he told me. So he said that about the fight with, with Tupac, that you, they both were very young. Very young. So was that, do you think that was some sort of a I, I, I hadn't thought, of, no, I think it was just an excuse pretty much to just to squash anything that I might have towards you. I didn't know, I wasn't thinking about that. I took my advice with a lot of motherfuckers. Like, hey, what that? Did that yet yeah, do a little jail time here? Yeah, because you press charges, but that's just the way you are. I don't understand why you're doing this, dear mama. Then all the pieces fit together. You got hired by the company with the blessed. With, I don't think the foundation even had them say so. They just took the money. That's all they do is take the money. And then approve the. Approve it. Right. Yeah, they have no say, no creative, nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. They are show pieces. Go get the latest star down in Hollywood Square. Go up there and put the street sign up. What else do they do to progress the fucking legend of my son? Positively. Last question. DJ Clark Kent is a DJ in New York who came out not too long ago and said that Tupac's lies were the reason that Biggie got killed. Meaning, I know what you mean. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's an unfortunate thing to think about. Between you and I, I think, well, um, you and the world, I don't think he had nothing to do with it. I don't think Big had anything to do with that conflict. And unfortunately, Pop did perpetuate it. But I think the people who moved on Big, the same people moved on Pop. Hmm. That was tit for tat to make it look like. In fact, he did. We take Big out, all the attention goes away from us. It makes it look like Big, in fact, did do it. Now, whether well, Pac instigate and contribute that to that narrative, to be honest with you, I'd have probably have to say yes. But like I said before, Pac was caught up in some dumb shit like everybody else. And when you have money, notoriety, and women, drugs, dumb don't look so stupid. And they got we just don't look so stupid because you're getting money, women, and drugs. You're living a life. So whatever you do is acceptable, at least to yourself. Well, like I said, that was all sales, man. That was the stupidest shit. Yeah, so, do you, so do you know, and, and from that perspective, when you, when, when you say that, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. But at the same time, Tupac was paranoid. Tupac had been shot. You said that before. Yeah, and he didn't, he didn't, from all intents and purposes of what Tupac said, not what I'm saying, he didn't really truly understand what had happened. Oh, you're talking about over the thing with Biggie in it. Oh, yeah. To answer your question before you even ask. Okay, so no, look, let's do I that think again. Let's he, do that again. Let's he do that believed again. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. I think he believed that. He believed that, right. I think... Tupac believed Big E had something to do with it. Right. With his limited knowledge and right. reality at that, that situation. Time. Right. From what he saw. But you have to understand, I don't think Tupac did, that he was in a trauma. You just been lit up four or five times, man. That caused him some serious thought, different thought process. You're not as logical and sensible as you think you should. What you think, you, I've seen shit that I find out it, I, it wasn't what it was supposed to be. Right. I thought I saw it that way. That was wrong. So, I don't know. I heard of some stuff about Puffy them being in the background and the other boy. Like, they might have known what was going on. But as far as Biggie, no. Nah. He came to the hospital the next day by his goddamn self. Yeah. And I know like I said, and you said that, and that that, that to me is what also confirmed, um, right, so. you know, the misunderstanding that Biggie and Tupac yeah, had it's from that good. perspective. Right. And then it became this marketing thing. Music and hey, get on the yeah. big fat motherfucker in your back of your ears. You know, make a record about fucking his wife and doing this. You know, just just stupid shit. Just stupid shit. Two black men at the height of their career arguing over stupid shit. Come on, man. Amazing, Mr. Garland. I want to thank you once again for this time for inviting uh, the art of dialogue myself. Thanks. into your home 
uh, giving us the time, the conversation, uh, despite the way you've been feeling lately. Yeah. And um, I want you to to let you know that um, a lot of the people that have watched the videos uh, that have been done, they love you. They appreciate you. I'm sure that you now see those when you watch those nice. uh, the uh, the videos and the, the comments involving those videos. And I, like I said, I just want to thank you once again. Appreciate it. Yeah. Don't burn and ramble too much and just, you know, oh, you're good. drift you're away good. from the question. Because I get to thinking about some other stuff when you ask me a question. Right. So I jumped to something else because I've been thinking about any relationship too. So yes, yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. But like, well, I enjoy you, bro, because at least you asked some questions. Now, tonight you asked me about other questions about stuff I really couldn't answer and I feel bad. Right. But I can't get in the mindset. I learned. Long time ago, getting the mindset of some other people. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. No, that's that's that that's important. What they like was I said, thinking. Yeah, why but... were they thinking that way? Yeah, yeah, you just can't do it. Yeah, what I do know is what the results of that thinking is. When I see things that occur that has a pattern, and I'm able to conclude certain natural things, certain progression to a conclusion, and I got my beliefs about things. Got no proof. But if you ever had proof, what, where would be the justice? Who would, who would prosecute? Get a motherfucker right here and grab them by the pussy. They can't get him <laughs> for a lie about all his property and everything. Yeah. People are gullible. I hate to say I love people, but they just believe anything. So they're going to believe what they're going to believe, and a lot of them believe in what they believe. They still believe Orlando Anderson killed him. They still believe he's in Mexico. They still believe he got kids. Tupac. Yeah. I saw one of them. He got two kids. And the Feeney kept him off the tax rate for tax purposes. That's what they say. That's, the, that's what some of the stuff you see. read some stupid wow. shit. Wow. Amazing. I be laughing, man. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, me, me personally, I don't even feed into that. Yeah, I, no, you can't, you can't answer. Yeah, you yeah. can't. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I mean, like I said, I knew Tupac and, and you, like, that is your son and, and, there's no way on God's green earth that he could be hiding this long. <laughs> His ego wouldn't allow. Yeah, absolutely. His and he was a Gemini too. It just, it ego just, wouldn't, yeah, allow just wouldn't happen. So, but I'm glad I could come along and maybe and give you a little like. No, thank my you. Like I, said, I appreciate it. Like I said, I'm 74. I'll be gone soon, so yeah. at least you have a little bit extra for well, what he thought. Well, not, well, well, we we we're not gonna hope that you're gone anytime I soon. Not either. If I get that pneumonia again, God we, damn. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> pray that 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 God put His hands on you and um. <laughs> And that you do it one day at a time like we all doing. Yeah, it's yeah. a fight. I ain't yeah. giving up. Absolutely. That's a fight. Thank you again. You're welcome. God, I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you. It.